All right, guys, Ryzen 3 is here already. I have here the Ryzen 3 1200, suggested retail pricing $109, and the Ryzen 3 1300X, suggested retail pricing $129. So now, AMD Ryzen covers such a large segment of the market, starting with Ryzen 7 back in March, priced at the top end $499 to around $300 for the Ryzen 7 1700. Ryzen 5 also came very hard hitting with covering all the way down to just over $150. And now we have just over the $100 price category. This is actually the most exciting to me and arguably the best Ryzen we've seen yet, offering the same Zen Core increased performance, IPC gains, and the inherent Ryzen efficiency using the same die that you find in Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 5. Now three coming to market with incredible quad core performance and an ultra competitive price tag to match. Aligns itself very competitively with the Intel i3-7300 and the Intel i3-7100. Intel priced a little higher, so Ryzen does undercut it with its current suggested retail pricing. And as you likely know, those Intel i3s are dual core processors with hyper threading for a total of four threads. So inevitably, the eyes are all shifting towards Intel's closest quad-core answer with their entry-level i5-7400-7500, albeit they carry a little bit of a price premium relative to the Ryzen 3 quad-core processor. And with value being so heavily emphasized once you delve into the price category of just over $100, it's no surprise that the Ryzen 3 stack all come with included Wraith Stealth coolers. That's low profile and the smallest form factor cooler out from AMD to date. Acoustic profiles rank at the quietest small form factor AMD cooler at just 28A weighted decibels and the low profile design also caters to smaller micro ATX, mini ITX cases, HTPCs. So let's get right into this review guys. All is revealed with benchmarks in different categories. That's gonna include gaming, productivity, video encoding, and content creation. Starting off with some 3D rendering using Cinebench R15 for single core performance, the Intel i3-7300 has the lead, the Ryzen 3 1300X not too far behind, and the gap really narrows with our overclocked 1300X. Now moving on to the multi-thread scores, this is where the true quad-core nature of the Ryzen 3 really shines, edging out even the four core performance of the more expensive i5-7500, and that with a commanding margin relative to the i3s and g 45 60 in this lineup. Okay, now for the 7-zip benchmark, that's compression, decompression, the 1300X with a score of near 15,000 at stock speeds, and with a respectful gain when applying that overclock. The 1200 is ahead of the i3s and the Pentium G4560, but does trail the more expensive i5-7500. So a quick word about overclocking. All of AMD Ryzen, all of the product stacks, fully multiplier unlocked, ready for performance tuning. Given that you have an X370 motherboard, B350 motherboard, X300 motherboard, although you'll notice the absence of overclocked results from Intel because I did not include a K-series processor and Intel has a little bit of a different mindset than AMD, not giving full user control to all of their SKUs. Okay, and now for Handbrake. This is converting 4K high efficiency video coding to Apple TV 3 format. The i5 does come away with the fastest time here, followed by the two Ryzen 3s, but the i3s and especially the G4560 do fall behind here by a pretty big margin. And now for a synthetic benchmark, that's a great indication of performance in DirectX 12. That's 3D Marks times Spy, one of my favorite benchmarks. The CPU score here for the Ryzen 1300X 1200 are out in front of the competition's i3s. The pricier i5 does have the highest score here, but it does cut it close, especially when you apply an overclock to that 1300X. So that's saying a lot. Okay, and this next test hits right at home for all the content creators out there. That's media encoding in Adobe Premiere. This is exporting a 1080p 60fps video. Ryzen with really impressive results here. A clear victory with faster encoding times from the Ryzen 3 stack to its similar price competition. Going so far as the 1300X coming neck and neck with the i5-7500. So leave it to the overclocked 1300X to finish with the fastest time besting even the i5-7500. Talk about value city for the Ryzen 3 for media encoding and content creation. 
and I've decided to take no prisoners when pushing the CPU to the limits. That's pairing them with the Overkill GTX 1080 Ti graphics card. So you really see in 1080p, how ready are these processors to push those frames? Well, let's take a look first at Battlefield 1, all over an average FPS of 100. The Ryzen 1300X comes in right behind the Core i3-7300. Although with its overclock, it does edge past and rivals that i5's performance. And in Far Cry Primal, the Ryzen 1300X gains the lead over the i3s, the Ryzen 1200 most closely matching the i3-7100's average FPS, and the G4560 out in the back of the pack, and that pricier Intel i5 does pull ahead, but by a narrow margin. In Hitman, respectable performance all round, the Ryzen 3 1300X, the best performance of the lineup when overclocked, and even at its stock clock speeds, comes quite close to the i5's performance, and the 1200 sits right behind the the i3's average frame per second. And in Doom with the Vulcan API, given the game engine frame limiter is at 200. Although it's great to see all processors performing right up to the frame cap. The 1% lows, impressive. They descend from the i5 all the way down to the budget G4560. For Ashes of the Singularity, a great title for DirectX 12, we see the i3-7300 and 1300X neck and neck. Overclocking, the 1300X does gain you a few extra frames and the more expensive i5 does have the lead here as expected. And for the Ashes of the Singularity CPU specific benchmark, a similar result here in terms of performance difference, although just narrowed in on the CPU, so the average FPS are way lower without the aid of the GPU. And in Dose X, Mankind divided the processors here with minimal performance difference, although the Pentium G4560 does lag behind a bit, just like we saw in the other gaming results. So all in all, where do the Ryzen 3 processors land in terms of productivity, content creation, encoding, and gaming. It really excels on all four fronts. This really is the best Ryzen that's out yet. So if you've been holding out on building a budget gaming PC or a budget PC that's for everyone that can do everything and doesn't break the bank, now could be the time to pull the trigger. Guys, if you're not subscribed to my channel, Awe of Tech, please be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with my latest videos. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I cannot wait to catch you all in the next video.